Coming up on Chapman News, the final debate, judging the winners and losers. Record-breaking voter turnout turning heads around the country. To return or not to return, that is the question Chapman students are asking as campus reopens. From Dodge College of Film and Media Arts, this is Chapman News. Good afternoon and welcome back to another edition of Chapman News. I'm Jules Rector. The election is just 11 days away. Last night, millions of Americans got their last look at Donald Trump and Joe Biden together. Jasmine Sani has more coverage. Thanks, Jules. After the first debate was called a disaster and the second one was canceled, the third debate was complete with a mute switch to cut off any interruptions. Jenna Perry has the play-by-play. President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden laid out two very different visions of America in what was considered the most normal presidential debate of the entire campaign. The night began with the country's most pressing issue, COVID-19. While Trump claimed the country is rounding the corner of the pandemic, Biden warned Americans of a dark winter ahead. We can't lock ourselves up in a basement like Joe does. He says that we're, uh, you know, we're learning to live with it. People are learning to die with it. Trump dismissed the seriousness of the spikes across the country when Biden came at him with COVID stats, as if the candidates were describing two different countries. If you go and look at what's happened to New York, it's a ghost town. It's a ghost town. Take a look Vice at what President New York has done in terms of the, turning the curve down in terms of the number of people dying. And I don't look at this in terms of the way he does. Blue states and red states. They're all the United States. The high stakes debate was filled with fury and falsehoods, ranging from the pandemic to national security. Trump attempting to put Biden on the defensive several times about his alleged involvement with foreign nationals. But Biden stood his ground. Your family got three and a half million dollars and, you know, someday you're going to have to explain. I have not taken a penny from any foreign source ever in my life. Chapman's professor of campaigns and elections, Fred Smoller, noted how Trump's performance was much more composed than previous debates. He had to dial it way back. And so he did. Trump is going to lose the election if the dynamic that's been established persists through November 3rd. Trump attempted to change the debate trajectory by citing his accomplishments for black communities, saying he has done more for black Americans than any president since Lincoln. I'm the least racist person in this room. Abraham Lincoln here is one of the most racist presidents we've had in modern history. Moderator Kristen Welker was able to direct the conversation back to policy, specifically immigration. Biden defended children who have been separated from parents at the border after Trump claimed most of the children traveled to the U.S. with cartels. They separated them at the border to make it a disincentive to come to begin with. And it makes us a laughing stock and violates every notion of who we are as a nation. In their last chance to pitch themselves to millions of Americans, both candidates attempted to lift public spirits. Success is going to bring us together. We are on the road to success. We're going to choose hope over fear. We're going to choose to move forward because we have enormous opportunities. CNN instant polls show 53 percent of voters believe Biden won and 39 percent for Trump. They essentially said, let's stay quiet and let Trump do himself in. And Trump's been Joe Biden's best campaign manager. With Chapman News, I'm Jenna Perry. With just 11 more days until the general election, California is breaking voting records. Over 4.5 million Californians have already voted. That's three times as much as 2016. Of the early voters, Democrats make up 51 percent, Republicans make up 39 percent, and 70 percent of them are at least 50 years old. Registered voters in Orange County can submit their ballots by mail until November 3rd. There have been warnings all year about vote tampering. Now national security officials are warning the public that Iran and Russia have both acquired American voter registration data. While Iran has used the information to send pro-Trump emails to voters, there are currently no ties to election fraud. Amy Coney Barrett's nomination is now moving to the Senate floor after the Senate Judiciary Committee voted to approve her 12 to 0 down the party lines. 
Senate Democrats boycotting the vote to slow down its process, but Republicans proceeded without them. During the committee meeting, Democrats placed photographs in their empty seats of people who rely on the Affordable Care Act. The nomination of Amy Coney Barrett is the most illegitimate process I have ever witnessed in the Senate, and her potential confirmation will have dire, dire consequences for the Senate, for the Supreme Court, and our entire country for generations to come. After forgetting that the right to protest is protected by the First Amendment, Barrett is now coming under fire for having served on private Christian school boards with anti-LGBTQ policies. Regardless of her criticisms, most Senate Republicans are doing everything they can to swing the Supreme Court to a 6-3 GOP majority. A final full Senate vote on Barrett's nomination will take place on Monday. We will keep you updated on all things politics. We'll see you next week. I'm Jasmine Sani. Back to you, Jules. Pope Francis becoming the first pope to bless same-sex civil unions in a documentary that premiered this week. Trovare il coraggio di aprire spazi dove tutti possano sentirsi. The film titled Francesco features the pope discussing issues of discrimination, the environment, poverty, and migration. Protests intensify in Lagos after the Nigerian military opened fire on thousands rallying against police brutality. People attacking police stations and setting buildings on fire following the shooting, which took 12 lives. For weeks, Nigerians have been protesting a police unit called the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, or SARS, over claims of kidnapping, harassing, and extorting the public. Here in the U.S., Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is meeting with foreign ministers from Armenia and Azerbaijan separately today. This, as attempts to maintain a ceasefire between the two conflicting countries remain unsuccessful. Pompeo urging Turkey not to escalate the crisis by joining in. The diplomat meetings are expected to help resolve the conflict through peaceful discussion. The Justice Department suing Google on Tuesday in the largest antitrust case against a tech company in decades. The lawsuit accuses the company of paying billions of dollars to phone manufacturers to make Google the default search engine on their devices. But the tech giant calls the suite deeply flawed and that people choose to use their search engine. People also choose to shop at certain stores. Today, the debate is centered around a new Hobby Lobby. Julian Ross has the story. Typically, when a new store comes to a town, it's met with excitement and positivity. There will be new products to buy, new jobs in the town. However, the new Hobby Lobby in Simi Valley, California, has caused a controversy among the town's residents. A home decor and craft store, Hobby Lobby is run by David Green and his family. They're conservative in their religious views. And in the past, Green has come under fire for taking away birth control coverage for employees under Hobby Lobby's health insurance plan. Their objections to two or three of the birth control methods seem to have to do with the fact that they thought that they were abortion pills or abortion devices and created abortions. That's what they said. But they obviously hadn't talked to any doctors about it. And a doctor could have told them that those devices have to do with ovulation, stopping it or delaying it. That's Julie Harris, a Simi Valley resident of over 26 years. On Nextdoor, a social media app for local communities, she is one of many people commenting on a post about the new Hobby Lobby. While some of the people, like Julie, are expressing their dislike of the company, others are supporting it and are glad they're bringing jobs to Simi Valley. Personally, I'm extremely excited Simi Valley is getting a strong business in this town, one person writes. If you don't like the store, then don't shop there. I can say on one hand, jobs are fantastic and we need them dreadfully, but what's the trade-off? That's why it's up to the government to set up standards and say, hey, this isn't okay. Come into this town, create jobs, but pay people a fair wage and don't stand for something that is so heinous and disgusting that it wants to put the women's movement back a hundred years. Hobby Lobby has also come under fire for donating to anti-LGBT organizations, as well as not carrying Jewish holiday memorabilia. But Julie says that in Simi Valley, it's about something more than just Hobby Lobby. We're still carrying the stain of being the town that hosted the trial for the officers who beat Rodney King. I don't say I'm from Simi Valley, and I realize the reason I don't is because they go, oh, the Rodney King trial. For people like Julie, the new Hobby Lobby is just another instance of the town's history of religious and conservative-minded decision-making. We tried reaching Hobby Lobby corporate offices for comment, but they did not return our emails. From Simi Valley, this is Julian Ross reporting for Chapman News. 
And coming up on Chapman News, the largest coronavirus case numbers near you and around the world. As Chapman reopens, we spoke with a student who attended class in a classroom. We'll take you through the changes. It's not even winter for most countries, but the global COVID-19 count has already topped 41 million this week, with over 400,000 new cases being reported. Melissa Cho has the latest. Lockdowns being reinstated in Europe once again. Starting midnight on Wednesday, Ireland has ordered non-essential businesses to close. People are to remain at home and stay within a three-mile radius for exercise. If we pull together over the next six weeks, we will have the opportunity to celebrate Christmas in a meaningful way. Ireland is the first EU country to return to lockdown and even tighter than before. And the curfew in France is expanding, covering two-thirds of the country. New Zealand saw a sudden increase with 25 new cases, the highest daily number in weeks. 18 out of the total came from Russian and Ukrainian fishing crews. This person developed symptoms Sunday night. So Friday night was right at the beginning of the period when they may have been infectious. While non-New Zealanders are not allowed to enter the country, these travelers were flown in as essential workers. And in the U.S., the numbers continue to rise with 77,000 new cases being reported on Thursday alone. The death toll at more than 222,000 lives so far. While 14 states saw a peak in COVID-19 cases in the last 10 days, California continues on a positive trend. Orange County passing an important testing milestone this week by offering 1 million swab tests, a significant increase in public testing. The cases in Orange County crossing 57,000, which is roughly 1% of the population. The death toll as of yesterday is at 1,434. With your international, national, and local coronavirus updates, I'm Melissa Cho, reporting from Taiwan. Close to home here at Chapman, the COVID-19 dashboard lists the number of total student cases as 16 in campus housing and 10 near the Orange campus. One faculty member has contracted the virus. The university is offering free testing to students in the residence halls and apartments following the two outbreaks at Chapman Grand and McKay. As COVID-19 numbers continue to rise, Americans prepare for the upcoming winter and flu season. Adriana Ferrari sat down with Dr. Jerrica Lamb to learn more. Everyone knows winter is getting closer day by day. And as the cold weather approaches, people are starting to move indoors. How do you see this affecting the COVID-19 pandemic? Right. So what we know about this virus, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, is that it's a respiratory respiratory virus and it is transmitted through aerosol droplets that can be um, in, in, the, in the air for a, a long time. And we're talking about minutes to many minutes. So that's a concern that people may be easily infected when, when in um, close quarters. And then there are a couple of regional surges across the country right now. I believe that there are 14 states that have gotten significantly worse in terms of COVID cases. Why do you think that this is happening? Yes, we think that people have been pretty either coronavirus burned out. Uh, maybe there's also definitely mixed messaging from political leaders and, and they're not coinciding with public health officials and the scientists. And another reason could be that uh, there are people who don't believe that this virus is as deadly as what we are no noticing. And so kind of going along with testing and basically feeling like people are over with COVID, do you think that an increased testing capacity helps that case numbers go down? Because I did read that Orange County is actually at their peak of testing right now, which is great. But do you think that this plays any significant role into the amount of cases reported? The 
the testing is one part of, of the strategy against COVID, and that is just to identify who is at risk of either being sick or at risk of transmitting it to others. To return or not to return? That is the question Chapman students are facing. About 30% of students return to campus to attend an in-person or hybrid class for the first time since March. Barbara Fox spoke with a student who attended their first in-person class in seven months. Mac Francini, a junior business administration major, had his first hybrid class on Wednesday. He said things that once felt so normal now feel like a dream. Being back here is definitely surreal. It almost feels like I'm in a dream because I'm back at Chapman, but the experience here is much different than it was in the past. Uh, everything just feels a little bit more empty, a little hollow, if you will, because although I'm still seeing a couple of my classmates, um, there's just so much missing. While it's difficult to adapt to the new campus experience, Francini prefers this to learning online. I struggle to pay attention in classes to begin with and having the virtual barrier makes it even more difficult for me. But he says getting used to this new classroom will take some time. Definitely a little weird. Only three of us in Beckman 104, which is a room again with occupancy for almost 80, I believe, students. Despite not having a full class, he's happy to be able to interact with his professors in person. I really encourage every other student who might be on the fence of coming back to just try it at least once. I felt incredibly safe on campus. Honestly, I felt more safe being there than I would have just going to a store. Chapman is still offering full remote classes as an option for students not wanting to return. This is Barbara Fox for Chapman News. Purdue Pharma pleading guilty to criminal charges in an $8 billion opioid settlement. As the maker of OxyContin painkillers, the company agreed to accept its part in worsening America's opioid crisis by supplying drugs without legitimate medical purpose. The deal with the Justice Department resolving some of the claims against the firm, but thousands of cases brought by families and states still need to be addressed. Coming up on Chapman News, hospitality from a distance. How tourism industries are fighting to survive. California is cooling down, but Colorado is facing the heat. We'll have the latest fire updates and your weekly forecast. Today, I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. The number of Americans seeking unemployment benefits dropping to 787,000 last week. While job losses may have eased slightly, layoffs are still happening at a historically high rate. The number of Americans living in poverty grew by 8 million since May, according to a Columbia University study. Now there is a total of 55 million people falling into poverty. The $9 trillion tourism industry has tanked in the wake of the pandemic. As hotels, airlines, and destinations continue to suffer, the industry scrambles to cope. Colette No has more. It's the world's third largest industry, but that was before COVID-19 brought tourism to a screeching halt. International tourist arrivals are expected to decline by 60 to 90 percent by the end of 2020, and tourism spending is not likely to return to pre-crisis levels until 2024. The hotel sector has been especially hard hit. Here in Anaheim Hotel, Howard Johnson remains closed. Director of Sales Heather Broderson said revenues fell sharply since the start of the pandemic. If you think about the areas that amusement parks are at, People don't really travel there unless it's for the amusement park. Theoretically, we're inventing the wheel. It's not like we've been through something like this before to know what safety regulations work and what safety regulations don't. Sylvia Bardales is studying hospitality management. 
She was devastated when she realized the declining hotel industry would affect her career. And my second internship was supposed to be uh, at Walt Disney World. I was supposed to do the college program. Um, it got canceled about a month before I was supposed to move. And then soon after that, they let go of like the 28,000 people. Her plans for after graduation have changed too. I was supposed to graduate and permanently move to Orlando and try to see what else I could do for the Disney company, which is something I've been wanting to do since middle school. And I hope to be able to find Find something here locally. Simon Hudson, author of COVID-19 and Travel, says a hotel business can recover if they are realistic about long-term planning. How can we position ourselves for the new normal? What's travel going to look like in six months, 12 months, 24 months time? There might be a, a different markets that hotels can go after. Being agile during these times will be critical for the hotel industry. Tourism as we know it may never be the same. I'm Colette Ngo for Chapman News. As one industry financially suffers, a new report shows Chapman's costs among the highest in the nation. The National Center for Education Statistics ranks Chapman in one of the top 50 most expensive colleges in America. Based on out-of-state tuition, Chapman comes in at number 40, costing students $75,112 each year just $2,000 away from being in the top 10. More fires in the Western United States sparked new evacuations in Colorado last weekend. Nicole Zedek spoke with one of the evacuees. Colorado has been experiencing one of the worst fire seasons in history, with more blazes erupting last weekend. The Calwood fire sparked near Boulder on Saturday, forcing 3,000 people to evacuate. Although only 26 homes were destroyed, it was one of the costliest fires in Colorado's history, with an estimated $36 million worth of property damaged. Up north, the Cameron Peak Fire near Fort Collins has burned since mid-August and is the largest in the state's history. Last week, dry winds upwards of 50 miles per hour forced more evacuations between Loveland and Fort Collins. Chapman student Peyton Bell was one of the evacuees. I was doing homework in the early afternoon and one of my roommates ran upstairs and was like, the neighbor just knocked on the door and told us we need to evacuate. And I was like, what? Peyton had less than one hour to pack up her belongings and evacuate the area. So of course my heart started racing. I was like, this is really scary. Uh, and so I just like started throwing my things in the suitcases that I had. The Cameron Peak Fire has burned over 200,000 acres since August and full containment isn't expected until sometime in November. As winter brings cooler temperatures and snowfall, officials are hoping this will help contain the spread of fires. Here in Southern California, winter might not be bringing snow, but there is a slight chance of rain this weekend for the first time in months. Currently, it is 75 degrees here in Orange. Gray skies, but it will be clearing up later in the week. But before we get into that, let's take a look at what's happening around the country. Up in Seattle, Washington, it's 48 degrees and you can expect showers tonight and tomorrow. Down in San Francisco, it is 63 degrees, and as we head towards the Midwest, it's 42 degrees in Denver, Colorado. It will be clear here today and tomorrow, but come Sunday, you can expect a snowstorm coming through the Midwest. Similar temperatures up in Minneapolis, and today in Chicago, there are some showers. As we move south towards Atlanta and Miami, it's going to be similar within the Midwest. It will be clear today and tomorrow, but come Sunday, there will be some showers in that region. Up in Washington, D.C., it's 76, and New York can expect some showers today as well with a high of 67. Now let's take a look at our Orange County forecast. It is the warmest here in Orange with a high of 75, but pretty similar temperatures all throughout Orange County in the, the low 70s. If you're heading towards the beach this weekend, definitely bring a coat because you can expect some cooler temperatures with 71 in Newport Beach and 69 in Laguna. Inland of Laguna towards Mission Viejo, it's 74, and if you're heading down south towards San Clemente, you would expect temperatures of 71. Now let's look at our seven-day forecast. It will be cloudy through the weekend here in Orange, and the temperatures will slowly be dropping until Sunday with a high of 69 and a low of 57. However, on Monday, it will be partly cloudy and the temperatures will start to rise again. Tuesday through Thursday, it will be sunny, and Thursday, it will be a high of 80 and a low of 55. That is your weekly look ahead at the weather. I'm Nicole Zedek. Here with your national and local sports updates is Erin Coogan. Hi everyone, I'm Erin Coogan and welcome back to another week of the best campus sports show. The moment we've all been waiting for has finally arrived. 
Chapman Athletics is making its way back to campus for the very first time since the COVID-19 shutdown. This past Monday, athletes reunited with their coaches and teammates to prepare for a competition season unlike any other. We spent most of the summer in developing our athletics specific plan as part of the whole Seen Safely Back task force. All sports are back on campus. I would say close to 70% of our student athletes are either already back and participating in these small group training sessions or intend to come back. Right now, practices fall into the re-socialization and reconditioning phase one category. For our student athletes, we have to have documentation that they've completed the athlete-specific COVID training. And when they arrive at the facility, they'll have their temperature checked. These practices are about 45 minutes to an hour just conditioning. They are two or three days a week, so we're not really at full strength yet. Other collegiate programs, however, are struggling to bounce back from the pandemic. UC Riverside announcing the possibility of the complete elimination of all on-campus athletic programs. If this were to happen, Riverside would be the only UC school without an athletic department. The Southeastern Conference doing its part in combating the virus by increasing repercussions for violations of health protocol. SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey announcing a $100,000 penalty fee for teams throughout the league who do not practice adequate mask safety. And finally, will the Dodgers be the second team this year to bring home a national championship to Los Angeles? The MLB World Series in full swing down in Arlington, Texas. The Tampa Bay Rays and Los Angeles Dodgers with an even one in one split in the best of seven series. The first now coming home. Betts beats the throw from Diaz, and the 0-2, swung on and missed strike three. The right, and bounced to short. Here's a pick, Turner from his knees, what a play! Don't miss out on game three tonight at 5 p.m. That's all for this week, I'm Aaron Coogan for Chapman News. Your favorite Halloween movie tradition coming to an end, coming up in entertainment news. to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. News of Sasha Baron Cohen's new Borat film broke the internet this week. Caught in an embarrassing act is the president's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. NBC News confirms that Giuliani and a young woman posing as a reporter are spotted in a hotel room where the former New York mayor can be seen putting his hands down his pants while the actress stands in front of him. Giuliani tweeting that the video is complete fabrication. The film is out today on Amazon Prime, and I, for one, will be checking it out. With more on the latest in entertainment is Maddie Fabricant. Hello, and welcome back. I'm your host, Maddie Fabricant, here to give you the latest in entertainment. Let's get right to it. California is now clearing some theme parks to reopen after a seventh month closure, but uh, sad news for Disney fans, as Governor Newsom's four-tier plan could possibly not allow Disney and Universal Parks to reopen until next summer. Dozens of Disney lovers and cast members gathered outside the California park on Saturday to protest its continued closure. This is following the company's decision to lay off more than 28,000 workers across the theme parks this month. Mayor of Anaheim, Harry Sidhu, saying that these guidelines fail working families and small businesses. Disney and the city of Anaheim will survive, but too many Anaheim hotels, stores, and restaurants will not survive another year of this. The streaming app Quibi is shutting down just six months after its launch. The first platform to specialize in short five minute to 10 minute episodes made for the phone, Quibi has come to an end after failing to attract enough visitors. Jeffrey Katzenberg and Meg Whitman, creators of the app stating, 
We started with the idea to create the next generation of storytelling, and because of you, we were able to create and deliver the best version of what we imagined Quibi to be. While we continue to see closures in the U.S. market, things are actually looking up for things overseas. Variety reporting that box offices are doing very well in China and Japan. China's year-to-date box office numbers hitting $2 billion in profits and Japan breaking records with its latest anime film, Demon Slayer, making $44 million opening weekend alone. And back here in the U.S., we are still embracing the Zoom lifestyle. <laughs> NBC's latest virtual sitcom, Connecting, will follow a group of friends navigating the early days of quarantine in true Zoom fashion. All the other thermometers were sold out, so I bought this meat thermometer. You think it'll work in my mouth, or I gotta stab it in my thigh like a chicken? No. Good grief. Just when we thought that 2020 couldn't get any more bizarre, the Charlie Brown specials will not be airing live on television for the first time since 1965. Apple TV Plus will instead be streaming the classics online, and viewers will be able to enjoy the lineup even without an active subscription. And as this year continues to be strange for everyone, including both Mickey Mouse and Charlie Brown, we promise to give you all the latest on updates and entertainment. I'm Maddie Fabricant. Back to you, Jules. And that's our show for today. We'll be back next week bringing you all the latest stories. Don't miss an episode of Chapman News. Check out our social media channels at Chapman News or our YouTube channel at chapmannews.tv. I'm Jules Rector and have a wonderful weekend.